Now this envelope from Susan Crew, uh, she lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. I've known Susan for quite some time. She was in the master class and um, has a very beautiful, bold, bright, colorful style. She loves all of her pattern and I've critiqued several of her works. Uh, so she sent me this envelope and a beautiful card inside. Now, um, this, I say of like all the pieces I've had so far, was a really big challenge, okay? Because, I mean, in every single envelope, there are things I love. Now here she kind of described all the colors, you know, pink is for nurturance and love, yellow is for sunlight and life, red's for fire of heart and intuition. So all the colors that she included in her envelope, she described, you know, kind of what they mean to her. So that was very cool and I actually was going to incorporate some of her handwriting in there. The ink kind of bled. So I made a photocopy of it and I shrank it down and I tried to kind of make some of this work, but in the end you'll see what happened. I, you know, again, you can't always include everything. But what made this super duper challenging is, and I'll, I'll just bring these little swatches up closer. So she gave me these color swatches and I just want you to take a look at the colors. Um, now they've already been cut, right? They were not cut before, but I just want you to see the wide variety of colors that she sent me. Again, she kind of described what each color meant to her. Purple, pink, fluorescent pink. I mean, and we're talking fluorescent pink here. <laughs> that is not an easy color to incorporate into any composition, right? But I just want you to see the diversity of colors she sent me and I was a little bit stumped. Here's um, another piece I cut, and then here's red. So my goodness, look at this red and fluorescent pink, and then there was um, black, which I was happy to see that there was a really nice dark in there. But you know, these are colors that appeal to her, and she wanted to just, you know, she, she made these swatches for me, and they were awesome. But the problem for me was what do you do because these colors are really like they're really different from one another right you could you could group the blues together you could group these three together like that and that would be cool um you could group say i mean that the fluorescent pink is kind of an outlier okay for me anyways maybe it wouldn't be for you but um, maybe these three could go together you know black goes with anything so if you go up here it could go here, but this fluorescent pink had me stumped. And I wanted to use all of her color swatches because it became a challenge for me. So what I decided was that um, you can make anything work. You can make any palette work. If there's the right amount of like repetition with variety and you know you sprinkle it around the composition so that if this is the outline color that, that feels like it's hard to incorporate, well, you just have to make sure it appears in the composition uh, multiple times. And so I'll show you what I did with all of these very challenging colors. I want to thank Susan for this great challenge. They're all challenging, you know, but uh, some are more so than others. And, you know, unlike some of the other envelopes I've been opening, these were not about texture or, you know, hand-painted lovely papers. This is about color. And so this was a color challenge for me. Um, in fact, that's, that's really what this whole thing was about. So given that I had a color challenge, and this is piece number 25, by, and, and it's um, swatches from Susan Crew. Um, what I did was I, I started to um, cut the perimeter of each piece um, kind of a roughly the same approximate size because some are really big and some are really you know smaller like the pink was pretty small I think I wanted to have them relatively not too far off from one another and so you'll see these little frames there's the fluorescent pink the regular pink the red the dark blue black and yellow and so on and so forth and then after I cut the little frames away, I had the little part that popped out and I cut away some of that and, I, and like the inside of this one was that one. The inside of, you know, this one was either this one or it could have come from this dark blue frame. And anyways, what I, you know, I started to play around with like where they would go. And what I noticed was that I think every single color is on here three times. So like the fluorescent pink is like one, two, three, 
this light purple is one, two, three. The red is one, two, three. The black is one, two, three. The dark blue is one, two, three. Um, the light blue is one, two, three. And if I forgot something, you know, yellow is one, two, three. Um, and that, that isn't something I planned. I think it just, like, after I finished the composition, I, I, I noticed it. It wasn't like I said, okay, I need three of these, three of these, three of these. No. I just, like, mapped it out, I guess, and that's kind of what happened. And then I wanted her name. I loved the way her handwriting was. So, actually, I took her name, which was written on the envelope, and I put a little bit of um, polymer medium on it to secure it so it wouldn't run. And then I just um, snuck it in here and here. Just a little bit of text, you know. Again, I think it would have worked fine without the text, but on the other hand, I kind of like the little bit of um, contrast that it adds because everything else is, um, it, this is such a different contrast than everything else that's going on here. So I wanted to share that with you because this has been one of the most challenging compositions. And some things that I tried to do were that uh, I tried to have like this guy overlap a little bit here. And some of these were completely closed frames, but some were open. I tried to have some of these little inner shapes closer to the edge of the frame than others. This one's more of a, almost a diamond shape. Some are very curvilinear, and some are kind of part curvilinear, but part rectilinear. So there's a lot of repetition uh, with variation, but um, these colors themselves are all very different from one another. So if you ever ever in that situation where you, you have a palette, I mean, just, just take that as your palette, fluorescent pink, light pink, light purple, light blue, dark blue, black, and try to, if that's your palette, um, this is one way that I think works. I'm sure there's a million other ways, but these would not be colors I'd normally choose. So thank you, Susan, for this tremendous challenge. It was a lot of fun. Okay, and then we come to this envelope. Uh, this was the one I did late last night, and when I opened it, you know, um, there was a letter inside, and I read it, and I'm not gonna say who this is from because it's kind of personal, um, but it was um, very heartbreaking to read what was in this note. Now that doesn't always happen, but people have definitely shared some stories that in their lives that have been very, very hard, you know, hard to share with anybody. Um, so when they share it with me, um, you know, I, I'm just really grateful and I feel closer to that person and I, really want to contemplate what I'm going to do with the pieces. Now, um, these are some of the pieces that were sent to me in the envelope. Um, there's this beautiful oriental writing that was on packing papers and things like that, some handmade pieces. Um, but I'm going to check all these things in here and I want to talk to you about the piece itself. So this piece to me became um, very much about content. And you know, in composition, we have the ability to um, work our content in many different ways. Sometimes it's abstract, sometimes it's not objective, sometimes it's realistic. It just depends on what you're trying to say. Um, when I opened this letter, I'll just say her first name. Her first name's Linda. And um, you know, I saw what was in it. This stamp was on the outside of the envelope and the, this text was from her letter inside. And she st I started to look at what was in there and I saw these, um, you know, what she had written in her letter was, um, I'm also including some pieces of a printing of a photo of my mother's face, a wave of her hair. So I saw the, the hair, the corner of her smile. And then I started to see this little piece here. These were separate. These are three separate pieces. So the corner of her smile and a clipping of the image of her eye, which was this piece. She passed when she was only 19 years old and I was a toddler. So taking all that information in and, and kind of realizing what I'm looking at, it's like, it just hit me. And I just sat there um, thinking, how could I possibly express this? And she also said that she'd been collecting these images herself and wanted to do something with her art, but she didn't quite know what to do. And I was, I was faced with that as well. 
so kind of as a tribute to Linda, I, you know, and she gave me these tremendously wonderful things to work with her letter number one. And so I took the pieces and, and these kind of just appeared. I mean, I saw that she had cut them from the same image and I put them together here. And then um, her mother passed away when she was 19. And these I just cut out of some of her other samples. And then her letter was very powerful. So I took those, it was a longer letter, but I took those portions that um, evoked meaning in this particular letter. I wanted her name in part to be on here, but not her full name, because I wanted it to be anonymous for her. So her first name is, is Torn. And the fact that her mother passed away when she was a toddler, um, I wanted there to be kind of a childlike feel to this. And hence, um, the way that I, I cut these the number out, uh, the way that these are kind of broken into pieces um, represents, you know, kind of a life that's been torn apart. Um, the Aloha sticker was the last thing I put on there. And I looked up the meaning of Aloha because I was pretty sure it meant hello, but I, I also thought it meant goodbye. And the fact that that was on her envelope, I thought, how amazing. And plus, the word has a very rich meaning um, it's very rich. It, it has to do with, you know, kindness and peace and calm and generosity and, and all these things. So many beautiful meanings. And so anyways, I just wanted to share with you that uh, content and, and how we tend to um, put that together in a work of art. There are so many ways, but compositionally, you know, what this really is, is there's a lot of open space. There's text but there's variation within the text. Um, and there's some very bold numbers, which you kind of want to draw attention to because this is an, an incredible number um, in this particular story. Um, the face stands out because it's the only really photographic thing here except for the stamp. And it's kind of meant to make you ponder this when you see it. I would, if I were to see this, I would at first say, Oh, well, that's an unusual composition. Um, it would kind of stand out from a distance just because this is very high sat. That's high sat, so there's repetition of the color. And then there's pink here, which is a derivative of red, and it's also in the stamp. Okay, so there's that. Um, there's this and this as far as text goes, top and bottom. But what's in between? And it makes you focus on, you know, the, the main event right here this face that only appears in segments. So I just wanted to share that, um, you know, each one of these pieces um, really does make you think because there's a lot of time and there's effort and there's stories that people like to share and have shared with me. And I don't take this lightly. <laughs> That's why each envelope has become its own piece. And it's I really do feel closer to every artist whose envelope I open because they've shared something personal with me. So um, I just want to thank Linda and I, I think this is a beautiful piece and your mother was absolutely beautiful. And I'm so sorry for your loss.